Welcome back to my studio. I'm working on another embryo today. These are painted on a cradled panel. It's made by a company called Ampersand. And here's what they are. I put a wire, hanging wire on the back. I also paint a square on all of my paintings on the back of the painting, whether it's the panel or canvas. Uh, I paint that with white acrylic. Then I can just put the title of the painting there and my copyright information, and then I put my website on the back. This again is a cradled panel. It's got one and a half inch sides. Comes white. I add a coat of primer with white acrylic, and then I also paint the sides black with black acrylic. And so then I just use painter's tape on the edge so that my edge remains clean while I paint. When I'm finished with my painting, I can just take that tape off and I have a nice clean edge. So today I'm working on a cardinal sitting on top of a basket of salvia, sunflowers, and white daisies. So I'm going to start painting the flowers. And I'm going to start with the white daisies first. And I'm using mixtures of ultramarine blue plus white. I'm using some dioxanine purple plus white. And on white flowers, I go ahead and paint the shadow in first. I paint my darker color and then I'll come back and accent with pure white where the sun hits them. You can see I'm working with a bright brush. This is a square ended brush, but I can use the corner of the brush to make fine brush strokes. This is just this is a mixture of phthalo blue plus white. I just want a variation of values and tones, different shades and just different little colors. And I'm going to have some of these down here too. I have to be very careful now where I'm painting over my background I have to be very careful as I paint that because my brush will pick up that background color. You can't really see it here, but it does, and so I have to keep wiping my brush to keep it clean. And I've also saved my background color. That adobe color is a mixture of my mud, which is two parts ultramarine blue, one and one part alizarin crimson. I've added white to that, and I've added some cadmium orange to that. And if you can't find cadmium orange uh, in the paint selections when you're ordering paint, I, you can make it using two parts of cadmium yellow medium and one part of cadmium red. So just put out two dabs of cadmium yellow medium, both the same size, and then put out one dab that size of your cadmium red, and that will make cadmium orange. I've shown you my painting setup too at the very beginning, my easel, and you can see my palette, I, I mix all of my paints on glass. I've had a couple of people ask me about that, and I use glass, I just put it over a white shelf board that I got at Home Depot, um, and so that way then I'm, my, I'm mixing my paint on a white surface, surface just like I'm painting on. So that helps me to get my colors. If they look right on the, the palette, they're going to look right on the canvas. Now I begin blocking in my sunflowers. Now these are mixes of my cadmium yellow medium plus a little bit of cadmium orange plus a tiny, tiny touch of mud. And then my center of the flower, I make with my mud, which is alizarin, again, that mixture of the ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. It's just a real deep purple. And I put my center in there right now because then I'm going to bring some of the petals over that. And I need to come back here and just put my background. I'm going to pull that into there. 
And again, I have to keep wiping my brush because I want to keep my colors clean. The secret to nice, crisp, clean colors on your canvas is a clean brush. So I use a lot of tissue paper. When I go to the grocery store and buy all those packages of tissue paper, I, people kind of look at me. They guess they wonder if I have a hotel or have a problem. But Jack always used to say we'd be standing in line and we'd have you know, four or five packages of tissue paper, which you could get then. Now you're limited to two. But um, he'd say, oh, Mickey, real, in a real loud voice, he'd say, oh, Mickey, don't forget the kale pectate. Of course, people would look at us and kind of move away. But uh, he was always fun. Now I'm going to bring some of these petals over that center. Like a lighter mixture of this will be cadmium yellow, medium and lemon yellow, plus a little bit of white. This is the sun's coming in from the upper right, so it's hitting these petals here. And they just come over the over the center of my sunflower. But you can see how I use the corner of the brush to make those finer strokes. I'm going to block in these. And the sun's coming in again from, from upper this direction, so it's hitting these petals down here so we get lighter down here. To use some of the oranges in the sunflowers just adds a little extra pop in there. And there actually are some sunflower flowers that are oranges and reds. And I've planted a bunch from seeds there just starting. They've just started to come up and so this summer I'm going to have a real pretty bed of sunflowers. These will go over the white flowers down there. Again, I start adding where my light's hitting in. But I like using, in all of my flowers, if you look at flowers in real life, they're not all the same value and and color. I mean there's lots of variation of color within them and so it just makes your painting more interesting to have a variety of color within your within your flowers. And this one is really facing down. We really won't even see much of the center on this one. And I need to put my center in before I Bring a little bit of my background color in here. Keep continually wiping the brush. Keep that color nice and clean. Okay, now I'm going to start putting in some of my foliage from my daisies. I work that around these yellows and I'll come back in and I can. Uh, I'll do a little more work on those sunflowers to shape them, to put the petals in. Need to put the centers in my sunflowers. Again, this is my mixture of mud plus liquid. And liquid just thins out the paint to make a nice little wash.
And I let I pick up some of that color because the sunflower has some browns in it and then it has a darker center within that. So it doesn't matter if I pick up some of that yellow in there. Now I'll do a lot more work on these sunflowers, but this shows you how I get them started and just the process and, and the color mixtures mixtures and, and all. And let's put one more little petal up here. And now I'm going to work on my daisies a little bit. Let's put one, let's see, these are popping out here. So I want to come back in now with my white and start adding some highlights. Use a little bit smaller brush here. I try to use the biggest brush possible until I just it's too big and then I move down to the next brush. I can just brace my hand on the easel here and then put in these little brush strokes of those white petals. And you can see by having the shadow color in there, it makes those whites appear brighter. You can't have light without dark. Put a little bit more of my shadow in here. Now here I have to be very careful. See how my brush is picked up? I don't know if you can see it right there. But it's picked up some of that green on the brush. So I have to be very, very, very careful, and that's why I keep wiping my brush. And we get some light here. Now I'm going to put the centers in. There we go. And I'm just using some of my sunflower color. I'm using that more orangey mixture, and that's going to be my centers. I want that to be a little bit darker. So I've got a darker red over here on my palette from a previous painting, so I'll just use that. See how those immediately look like daisies. I'll bring a few little stems in here. got our flowers blocked in. I'm going to put some more daisies in here, but I want to wait until I get my basket in. So I thank you so much for watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also visit my blog. The link is in the description below and that will take you to the complete blog on the step-by-step -step process of this painting. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And just I thank you so much. And just remember, practice kindness today. So if you're out and about, you see somebody that needs help, maybe some an older person is struggling with getting a door open or something, just help them. And just, you never know how that's going to make somebody's day. That, that may change their whole day from a not so good day to a really nice day. So you just have a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank you again so much.